in this video, we utilize OpenAI's ChatGPT4 to create a web scraper, specifically to scrape websites and web pages in the website for email addresses. Now I'm about to show you how I got GPT-4 to make it, the process and what the code looks like. I'm gonna show you examples of the web scraper created by GPT running and extrapolating different emails from different websites. So you can see the functionality in real time in the real world applications of practical use. Now a little bit of backstory, I know basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but I do not know a lot with Python. I can make basic Python scripts, but I can't do anything like this. So from a complete beginner to, to Python, for me to be able in 20 minutes to create a web scraper, I, my mind was blown, especially with all the videos online right now that's talking about things that you can do with GPT-4, but none of them practically could apply for business use case. This in theory generates cold leads and you can utilize this web scraper to extrapolate phone numbers as well if you are a business person. But while it's not ethical to do that and you should never use a web scraper on a website you are not pre-authorized to use the web scraper on, this is simply for educational purposes. Let's get straight to the computer. All right, so here we have an instance of GPT-4 running. And, you know, this was the first questions um, that I sent to it earlier. We're going to go over all of them. You know, I have some free time today, so I'm thinking about exploring the programming language Python today. Do you have any suggestions for projects that I could work on using Python? It says, that's great. Python's a great language, blah, blah, blah. Its first suggestion was a web scraper. So we, we ran with it. And I was like, well, what are practical uses for web scrapers? And it said, you know, you can do data mining, price comparison, market research. But down here on number seven, it says lead generation. And I was like, bingo, that's like something I could use if this was not for educational purposes. So with that mentality, I went ahead and was like, okay, could you help me build a web scraper in Python that would allow me to scrape small business websites, small restaurants, landscaping co companies, contractors, plumbers, et cetera, for email addresses and the respective first name for the email address account. The Python program would then export the email addresses along with the first name in a CSV file. Chat says, I can help you get started with a simple web scraper using Python's beautiful soup and request libraries. Keep in mind that scraping websites is, is not something you should do. And it says, first, make sure you have beautiful soup and request installed. And I was like, geez, thanks chat. I don't even know what those things are. I mean, I like soup, but I wouldn't necessarily call something beautiful if it was in regards to soup. So yeah, uh, I, I guess let's do that. And it, it gives me the command I need to type into command prompt for that. And then it spits out some code and says, utilize this. So I put that code into Visual Studio code and I read over it and it says that here's where I need to type the URL. And I was like, okay. So I ran that code in Visual Studio and it did export a CSV file and that CSV file was empty. And it was frustrating to me because I know the website contains emails. I utilized it on a website that I helped build. So I know for sure that there are emails associated with that website. So we went straight back and asked GPT. I said, hey, I'm running this code for the web, sc web scraper in Python. And I said, what are some reasons why the CSV file is empty? It said there could be several reasons why the CSV file is empty. After running a web scraper code, no email address is found, dynamically loaded content, and email addresses in non-text elements. And it said to debug the issue, you can try printing out the parsed HTML code and inspect it manually to see uh, if email addresses are present. And I was like, gee, thanks. So I'm going to do that. So I did that. I inspected the code and while on the homepage of the website, there were no emails present, there were emails present on web pages that are connected to the homepage. Um, so I went back to chat and I asked chat, 
does this Python code scrape all web pages on the website or just the URL that I type in? Chat says the provided Python code only scrapes the single URL you type in. It does not automatically follow links and scrape all web pages on the website. If you would like to do that, you'll need to modify the code to discover and follow the internal links. But here's an example of the code you should do that with. <laughs> so um, I copied this code because this code entirely replaces every bit of code it's typed up to this point. So we we copied this code. I pasted it in Visual Studio Code. I ran it. And then I found that magically the CSV file had data, right? It had data in the CSV file and I was excited. And it had emails in the CSV file. I was really excited, but it was all mixed up with other data. And I was like, oh man, this is a jumbled mess. I couldn't upload this to Flowdesk or MailChimp or something. So then I went back to chat and said, hey, so this code exported data in the CSV file containing email addresses, but the email addresses were all mixed up with other text. Is there a way to fix this? I gave it the code for reference in case it needed it. And it said that it seems to be there is an issue with the extraction based on, you know, the words that are around um, the text. And it gave me an example of code that I could refine the code that I have in Visual Studio with in order to search for email addresses only within the content of paragraph elements. And I didn't want to do that. I kind of want to search all the HTML on the website for email addresses because they could literally be anywhere. They're not only going to be in paragraph elements. So I went back to chat and said, as I inspected the website code, I noticed that all of the emails were in a format that looks like this href, you know, quote mail to example mail at gmail.com quote. Could you refine this code, which is the code we have, to scrape websites for the emails in the format that I showed you that I found them in when I inspected the site? And just like that, chat was like, hey, no problem, bro. I got you. Replace this line in the code that you have already that says, you know, define, extract emails and first names with this code here. So we did just that. And it works flawlessly. And I'm going to show you proof of this working and how it all works. I, my mind was blown because this is insane. So we're going to go over to Visual Studio Code here. And you can see this is the code that ChatGPT exported for us, right? So we are good to go. Right here is where we would place the website URL. You can see there's one right there because I've been testing it. Now we need to find a website to scrape. Copy this URL right here. Go into Visual Studio Code. Paste that right there. Click Run. Now you can see down here it's running. We're going to let it run and it it's going to take a minute because it's scraping all of the different web pages for email addresses. And that's kind of crazy. If you look over here, it has a CSV file exported, but there's nothing in it right now. It's looking for stuff to put in this file for us. All right. So it is done scraping this website. So let's go ahead and go over here to the CSV file, we'll double click it and look at that. Oh, well, I don't own the license to, to Excel, but you can see here it got office at firstneighborhoods.com, you know, five times, but I assume there's five iterations um, on the website of that. Now we could refine the code and ask G GPT to not add the same email address more than once, obviously, but I didn't think to do that yet. So that would be the next step. If I didn't want this to happen, ask GPT to refine the code to not have duplicate email addresses, but it got the first name of the email address user and the email address from the website. And you could simply upload this if it wasn't for educational purposes to your email list or your, or whatever. Now I'm going to delete this. That way it doesn't just put another one and another one and another one there because this is just for test purposes. But now we're going to go to 
another website and test it on that other website. So let's go over here to this website here. Just like before, we're gonna copy the URL. And then we're gonna switch over to Visual Studio, replace this right here with that URL and click run. So it's scraping that website now. I mean, this is crazy. Think of the real world implications. If I was able to do this in 20 minutes, because it took 20 minutes, as somebody that doesn't know Jack really about Python, what could a programmer do that was knowledgeable in Python or something like that, utilizing GPT? And, you know, GPT can function this way with any programming language. And that's insane. I was testing it with web development because I am pretty versatile with that. And I was able to get up a website. Now, while stylistically, I'd have made some changes to it. But within 10 minutes, I had a simple website that I could have deployed. And I was like, this is insane. And I'm going to go over a bunch of different use cases as I discover them with GPT-4 because the more that is out in the public eye, the more that people are going to realize like AI is a powerful tool that we can use right now to, to achieve magnificent, great things. And there's no reason to sleep on it. All right. So it just finished scraping the website. So let's go ahead and go over to our other screen and we see there's 17 kilobytes worth of emails in this CSV file. So let's double click it and open it. Oh, wow. We have a lot of duplicates, but look at that. We wound up with, what is that? 20, 20 emails. And, you know, we could, you know, go through the process of deleting all the duplicates, just selecting all those roles, <laughs> those roles, <laughs> selecting all those rows and deleting them. But like I said just a second ago, we could simply ask GPT-4 to refine the code a little bit deeper to where it could remove duplicate emails from the CSV file. And you know, as well as I did, if I did that, it would take 10 seconds flat and we'd have the code fixed and we wouldn't have duplicate emails. But I wanted to make this video and, and initially I wasn't going to make a video today because I've pumped out a few different podcast episodes yesterday and the day before and I was going to take today as a break just to really explore the, the possibilities of GPT. And as I was doing that, my mind about, I mean, my brain about blew out of my skull and I was like, I have to, to share this. And I know other people know that you can do stuff like this with GPT, but maybe there's somebody that hasn't seen that yet or know about that yet. And they're like, just looking for the right video to be online to show them. And man, it's insane. Can you imagine what, you know, GPT iteration five or six would be, or maybe some of the AGI components, if they get refined the right way, like auto GPT could do, if it truly had the ability to make good reasoning decisions with GPT four and 3.5, Man, it's insane. But I appreciate your time and I appreciate you watching this video. Let me know in the comment section below if there's any topics or anything you want me to try to get GPT-4 to do and I'll make that happen in one of the future videos. The cool thing that's happened is my book, The Marketing Masterminds, released now. It's available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Google Play, Apple Books, everything. I'll drop a cool link in the description because I'm giving away free access to the first full chapter for free. Just click that link, scroll to the bottom of the page, and you'll see access the first chapter here. It's really cool. And this book will get anyone that's either an entrepreneur or a small business owner in the right direction because marketing's key. A lot of business owners think if I simply open a brick and mortar location, if I pay all this money for a big sign, then people are just gonna come in. And oftentimes based on your location, you will get clients, you will get customers. If you're in a service-based business, it's a little harder, but you still will get those clients, those leads and those customers. But if you have a dialed in concise marketing plan, you can predict your income based on what you were spending as long as you know what you're doing. And that's why I made this book is to try to teach, you know, the general person that doesn't have any special knowledge in marketing how to start a good marketing campaign. 
and there's solid information and there's no knowledge like free knowledge and the first full chapters for free. So make sure you check that out.